that I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it they will be food for you right man if you're a Christian or Bible believing folk you should really lean into that piece of scripture right there there's two ways. Uh, oh, welcome to our channel. My name is Doug. My wife, Stacy. We live in a log cabin off grid with no public utilities. We grow 90% of our own food. We live 100% off rainwater. This is my famous YouTube rainwater jug. <laughs> right? We poop in buckets and we are the ungovernable. And we also live kind of within the system. We just participate in the system when we want to. But with all the pressures lately of uh, food, electricity, uh, you know, water, you just saw that big story uh, coming out from down south there. Uh, their water treatments all messed up. One uh, a public official had mentioned that there was even some sewage backing up into homes uh, via the faucets. And then another person said that wasn't true. But the bottom line is they had so much water problems down there, kind of like Flint, Michigan a couple years ago, they actually ran out of bottled water and they're fighting all this water problems, right? So our thing around our channel here, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, and our Facebook page and our Homestead Homey group on Facebook page is that we teach you guys how to live, you know, kind of the way God intended. And for some of you, it might mean something a little bit different, but I think we all have the same base, which is that we should turn to Him for our provision and not man. And as we can see things uh, going on in the world and even our own country, the United States, we can see that man, once they have control over your food and over your water and over your electricity, they plan to make slaves of you, okay? And so all of our videos are, are geared towards helping you break free and be independent also while forming community, okay? So in this video, one of the things we're talking about lately, a lot of people are talking about is food. And I'm watching food lines in France. I'm watching um, food pressures all around the globe in Sri Lanka. No food, right? So you're gonna see a lot of food pressure coming on even in our own country, right? Our own uh, you know, labs and people are now actually making food that doesn't produce seed, right? That's called genetically modified food. And they do that so you will not have a constant food source, right? The way uh, in Genesis there, Genesis 129, the way the Father intended, right? He intended us to have a renewable food system and on its own with no input from, you know, chemical fertilizers, right? <clears throat> but now man is actually developing seeds that do not generate more seeds. So every year the farmers have to come back to the man to get seeds to make the food, right? So we wanna get you guys away from that. There's food all around you. And what we wanna look for is heirloom type of food, right? So if you're shopping for seeds for next season, which I suggest you guys get on that right now, don't wait till next year. Get on your seed purchases for next year right now, right? And try to find some heirloom seeds. Heirloom seeds are seeds that were grown in your area over multiple generations, okay? And they're building tolerances uh, to your area, to the climate to the way they produce, um, just everything about it. They adapt to the water, the sun, everything, okay? So that's why heirloom seeds are the best. You don't wanna try to, you know, if I'm living here or if you're living in Alaska, you don't wanna try to grow pineapples. So you wanna try to grow food that is relevant to where you live. That's why eating close to your area also helps you with allergies and all this other kind of stuff, right? So what we're gonna do in this video real quick is try to help break the cycle of food dependence and teach you guys one of the easiest hacks possible on how to save seeds uh, from tomatoes so you can have a bountiful crop next year, okay? So we're gonna catch up with Stacy right now who's gathering a few things uh, to get ready for this project and she's gonna lay it all out for you guys and how you can be food independent, all right? Let's go check it out.
guys, before we get started, I want to read something to you real quick. Farmers warn ketchup, salsa, pasta sauce, and other tomato products could soon be in short supply. Drought conditions, supply chain problems, and inflation are impacting the tomato harvest season in California. So did you guys know California's farmers grow nearly all of America's processing tomatoes? This is my important message for you guys. You know, we're hearing all these messages about food shortages and the article that I just read for you. So this is our time that we need to be proactive and to do something about it because if we are proactive, we can take care of ourselves. And that's the thing, they don't want us to take care of ourselves. So you need to take care of yourself. So what I wanna show you is a really simple, easy way that you guys can save your tomatoes so that you won't have scarcity of your pasta sauces and your sauces and you can be making all these wonderful things next year. So all you're gonna need is a few pots. Now I will tell you, many years ago when we started doing this, because I found this actually from one of my Amish neighbors, I was like, what is this? I looked in this pot and I couldn't believe what it was. And uh, I looked in it and basically she was slicing tomatoes. So right now, as you guys can see here, this is a Cherokee purple tomato. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice it, just like I'm gonna be slicing tomatoes to put on a sandwich. Just little thin slices, just like that. So now all I'm going to do is put them and lay them on top of my pot that has dirt in it. And I'm gonna pack them in there pretty good. Even the part that looks kind of yucky, I'm gonna stick that in there too. I'm just sticking it all in there. Because if you guys notice, come on over here and look at this here on my board. Do you see some of these seeds? They kind of have this gelatinous, see how it's kind of jelly? That's like a protective coating on there. And that little gelatinous kind of goop that's around the tomato seeds, it protects it. So what happens is your tomato seeds need to kind of go through a fermentation process. So that would be like your tomato plant dies, the tomato that was on the plant falls down into the earth, and then over the weather, you know, it gets warm, then it gets cold, it gets rain, it gets snow, it kind of ferments it, it kind of dissolves that gelatinous goop that's around the seed to make it ready to sprout and be ready for next season. Now it's really important that you label your tomatoes. So I just like to use duct tape. You can use duct tape for almost anything. And I'm gonna write what this is, Cherokee purple. Different sized tomatoes work great too. So I'm gonna use some of my cherry tomatoes that I wanna use for next year. So I'm just gonna slice them up the same way just like that and I'm gonna lay them inside. And I can't stress enough how important it is to label them because you will forget what they are. Now I know you guys are saying back there in your comments, how many tomatoes do I use? You know what, and it's up to you because I'm gonna tell you this is gonna produce like hundreds of tomato seedlings when it's getting ready to um, sprout. So you guys decide how many tomatoes you want. What I like to do is I make, I have a few extras and I give them to my friends. So it, it's like a gift that keeps on giving. This is definite food security. You will have stuff for your neighbors, for your family, for everybody. So right now, this is my ultimate favorite. I did a, a video on it about the pink brandy wine tomato. This is my favorite tomato. So I got, definitely have to save this one for next year. Pink brandy wine. And then from there, she said I needed to take them and put them in a dark place, preferably like in your root cellar, in your basement, in a closet somewhere. And so that's where we're going right now and I'll tell you the next thing she told me. So this is gonna be my cool dark spot. It's gonna be underneath in our crawl space here. And so she told me that I needed to put it down there and just forget about it all winter long. Now I'm gonna place these somewhere just against the wall somewhere and then just kind of forget about them. I don't have to water them. I don't have to do anything. I'm just gonna leave there till spring. So 
So next she told me in the spring, I'm going to take them out from underneath where you had them and then start watering them. I put them in a window in your house somewhere where they can get the little sunshine because they haven't had any sun. They've been hibernating. And then I'm going to give them the water. They need the sun. You don't want to put them outside because it might get a little cold. So you want to be careful because these things are going to start to sprout. And then after a while, you're going to start these little seedlings are going to start popping up. And just in a matter of a few days, I was amazed that I had hundreds of these little seedlings. Don't you guys think it's just amazing to find out that from this tomato, we can get hundreds and hundreds of plants from this tomato that God gave us. I mean, I, I just, I marvel at it every single day when, you know, you go and you're going out and you're getting your food in your garden and you're seeing what God has provided us. Just for me, simply putting a seed in the ground. And this is something that's so simple for us to do. And we're taking all this for granted when we go to the stores, you know, and a lot of these kids don't even know where food comes from there. You ask them and they say it's at the grocery store. So, I mean, I think it's so important that we teach our children this. And then for you guys too, to start, you know, start growing something. I mean, this is so simple to do. We have so much bounty and provision from this little tomato with all its seeds that we're going to have to thin it out. And so when you thin it out, you don't want to thin them out when they're teeny. You know, you want them to be about, you know, inch, inch and a half or so, two inches. And you don't want to get the really tall spin, spindly ones. You want to get ones that look pretty good. You know, they have a couple leaves on them and then you're going to transplant them in you know, little pots and then start watering them and then you're gonna have a tomato plant. So just by slicing a tomato and putting it on top of some dirt, putting it into a cool dark spot and letting it set over winter, you can come out in spring next year and have a bountiful bunch of tomatoes that you like. And you won't get caught up in a shortage and you won't get caught up in GMO tomatoes to where you won't be able to produce a seed for your favorite tomatoes. And you won't have somebody trying to control you through your food and your water. All right, hope you guys found some value in this video. See you guys on the next one. And just remember, man, everything is at your fingertips. You don't have to grovel at the feet of man uh, for your sustenance, okay? Right, but don't let them make laws and, and pass laws and put you in the trick bag uh, to, to turn you into a beggar. Okay, hit that subscribe button on the way out if you want to learn how to be, you know, live more sustainable, right? Grow over, more of your own food, you know, teach other people to do it, right? Because you found the right place, all right? See you on the next video.